talking to Suzanne Howe about the Butterfly Lovers Concerto. Suzanne, uh, tell us a little bit about the story uh, about uh, this concerto, a uh, little bit about what lies behind it and how was it playing the premiere for Cape Town Tonight? Well, it was so special to share this music today and I, I met so many people after the concert and and what's remarkable is that this story was written, the latest it could possibly have been written, written was the year 420 and um, and that's over a thousand years before Shakespeare wrote Romeo and Juliet and and what's fascinating to me is that we keep telling the same story and so I feel like everybody knew the music even though they had never heard it before and that was really special because I, I really got that from from the audience and uh, you know th there's a little variation uh, from the from the Shakespearean version in this butterfly lovers uh, version the um, the female role Juliet uh, she's actually um, well she begs her father to go to school at, at that time girls were not allowed to go to school and so she begs her father who is the head of the household and um, he uh, he's able to make all the decisions so she finally managed to get to school and there she falls in love with her Romeo and so for three years they are actually roommates but he never knows that she's a girl and um, they're the best of friends but she knows inside that she's in love with him so when it comes time to say goodbye after the three years of school she tells her Romeo uh, to come visit her at home because she has a twin sister that he should come marry <laughs> so uh, so he's of course so happy uh, that he's going to go visit his friend and marry the twin sister. So um, then she goes home. And unfortunately, that's where everything starts unraveling because her father has promised her to be married to a family friend's son. And um, and you can hear all this, uh, you know, the, the, the beautiful melodies and the music and the joyous times that they had together. And then when she finds out this news, it's just this ominous uh, gong and uh, stubbornness within the, the breath section in the orchestra, and it's just so dramatic. And it really should be staged, in fact, as a, as a, as a play. It, it's almost like an opera for violin and cello and conductor and orchestra. <laughs> so, um, but it's, it's really beautiful. And I, I think my, my favorite part of the concerto is the moment when she sees Romeo coming down the hill and um, as he's walking over the hill she feels so much happiness and so much sadness at the same time because she's happy to see him again but um, it's tragic that she can't marry him anymore and uh, there's tremendously dramatic uh, cadenzas in the violin where she unravels entirely and then, as the story goes, unfortunately, uh, they both commit suicide. But um, thankfully, according to Buddhism, we all get reincarnated. And so the, um, uh, the moment when she, she uh, actually, well, the moment when she decides she's done with this world, she falls on her knees, she begs the heaven, heavens to help her, and the sky clouds over, and thunder strikes and lightning hits the tomb where her Romeo lies and it splits open and she jumps in and then some minutes later the sky's clear and a little crack of sunshine comes through the clouds and uh, it shines on the tomb where two little butterflies fly out and um, this is based on a real place, actually, in China, and and people say, legends have it, uh, myth, the myth is that um, you can still find those two butterflies who are there forever, for eternity. Wow, so. I've got goosebumps. <laughs> Thank you so much, Suzanne. Stunning so, playing as well. Thank you. And I, we hope it's to see you soon. To share this together. Okay. Thank you so much.